Babies, 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 it's time to continue the funkiest list in all the lands. And I'm talking about the top 100 Atari games of all time. And today we're going to be counting down. Today's list number 50 to 41. Hey man, it's time to get funky. <laughs> Oh, that hit right where it was supposed to in the good goods. And if you have any questions about who I am or who I'm collaborating with, John Stoll, the Atari 7800 Pro Gamer over at the Atari Network, you can always refer to the first video in this series. And we also go over the ground rules of what we count and what we can't count. But without further ado, let's get on with this bad A intro and let's count this jive down and get to number one town before I die. Since the beginning of time, there's only been one website with the Bobalongs to claim every game reviewed when it came to the pro system, and that's Atari7800Forever.com. But now it's time to get on that YouTube trip, babies. And who am I? I'm Funkmaster V, musician, ghost hunter, hat flipper, Pro wrestler, comedian, actor, filmmaker, and I'm going to take you on a whirlwind tour of all things cool about Atari and the Atari 7800 with a podcast, news, even new crap. Baby, are you ready to get your groove on? Because it's about to get funky up in here. Hot damn tamale, you know these next 50 games we're going to count down are going to be some bad mama jamas, but we're going to throw you a little uh, funky curveball here at the first here with Berserk, but it's the Berserk Enhanced version. It was released by Atari in 2023 for the 2600 Plus line. Now, this is essentially the same game that we all played when we were kids. It's a maze shooter. It's a, it's a port of an arcade game, which was fantastic. It's uh, one of the most important uh, arcade games of all time, just because it really was the precursor to the first-person shooter, if you think about it. But it was excellent in its own regard, and it's great today. This version is a little different, though, because it does have enhanced audio, the digitized robot voice, which is really fun and really cool. Show me your weakness, human. And you don't have to attach any cumbersome, clumsy Atari AudioVox uh, mechanism to the console like you do with uh, some of the other versions. Also, they add a little tweak here that the uh, robots can shoot diagonally, which is different from the original version of this. So this is a little advanced and a little bit more difficult. I think we can all deal with it. We're all in our uh, 40s, 50s and <coughs> now. Uh, we can deal with a little extra uh, difficulty. But this game is uh, tremendous. It was released to promote the 2600 Plus, but it can play on a regular 2600 or a 7800. My only complaint with this version is I wish they would have included the game list, since this is essentially the same game as the 2600. You can go to many places online and download a PDF, or at least look at the PDF to see which game variation you want to play. I would suggest choosing number three. That is the one most like the arcade. If you want to talk about important video games, uh, this next one is, is pretty damn important too. This is Gauntlet, and this was an arcade game that possibly originated the term hack and slash, and also brought Dungeons and Dragons flavor into the zeitgeist as far as video game players are concerned, because there are people who don't like Dungeons and Dragons who play video games and vice versa. This was a nice crossover because a lot of the crossover before this were like text-based adventures that was like you see a salami sandwich what do you do and then you type eat salami sandwich and then it says you died because it was poisoned or something like that so this is a very significant step in the right direction you got to pick between four different characters an archer a slut uh, yeah he's very tempting in his little loincloth and then there's a female slut and then a wizard who nobody wants to see him naked. But you got to pick who you wanted to be. And up to four people could clear off these levels, tag teaming with each other, uh, killing all these baddies, trying to clear off the mazes and collect treasure and, and memories that would last a lifetime. This game's also kind of a precursor to the whole MMORPG genre. You know, you're playing with your friends in a fantasy realm, killing like dark elves and goblins and stuff. So 
Yeah, this game really was a trendsetter. Another great multiplayer arcade game is Vindicators 2. There was a Vindicators 1, uh, but I guess it was a little wonky or something. They re-released Vindicators 2. They eliminated a lot of boards and kind of streamlined controls, but they're pretty much the same game. But if you have the ability to pick which one to play, I would always pick 2. Again, like we were talking about earlier in the series, uh, this is another game with unique controls. This is one of the first dual stick tank games where you can drive one way and spin your gun turret left and right with the use of buttons. Really, this game is kind of a simple tank game uh, that's kind of fun and there's a lot of power-ups and there's a lot of enemies to destroy and there's different maps. Uh, but really, the fun of this game, just kind of like Zybots in a way, is the control mechanism uh, where you can back up, go left, go right, uh, spin around in circles, and you can also send your gun turret spinning in all sorts of directions. Vindicators 2 can be beaten, and I have beaten it, and when I did beat it, it glitched out, and uh, I never forgave that particular arcade for that. Uh, one day I'll see the ending of this game, and I'm, I'm sure uh, my life will be changed forever. Breakout was really cool and a unique concept. It kind of was, it basically was a one player Pong, and I think it improved upon Pong a hundredfold. Super Breakout was a massive improvement over Breakout, and I think the home version of this game with all the variations uh, and the paddle controls that came with the Atari 2600 made this game one of the best ball and bat games that you could play for a long time. Some people don't like the chaos of Arkanoid Tournament, so they would prefer something simple like Super Breakout. Super Breakout was originally an arcade game and it featured hidden balls. Hey, what are we talking about here? In the play field, also it featured double paddles, faster gameplay, and overall it was a big step up over Breakout. People liked this game so much that they released it for the 5200 as the launch title. And even though Super Breakout is a good game, this was one of the first of many pack-in title faux pas that Atari started to struggle with. Pole Position 2, Cybermorph, California Games. I'm looking at you girls. When you talk about how great the Nintendo Entertainment System was, it all came down to the amazing games. Super Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, Contra, Castlevania, Metroid, Punch-Out. These were all amazing games. Now on the second tier, there was a game called Operation Wolf, which was a port, but was excellent on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Atari eventually got its head out of its butt and started copying some of the games that the Nintendo was putting out, and they put out their own version of Operation Wolf, and I prefer it tenfold. This is a simple five-stage alien invasion game. It's a light gun game that you can play with the clumsy Atari light gun, but it's perfectly fine to play with the reticle. It features cutscenes, missions, bosses. It's very difficult to figure out who the heck the good guys are and the bad guys. The good guys, who are predominantly American soldiers in this instance, are being overtaken by these aliens. It's kind of like uh, invasions of the body snatches. And you got to figure out who's who and take them out with great prejudice. Which is one of the last times we could use the word prejudice in a positive light. I love this game. You can beat it within about 20 minutes. It doesn't take long. And you can just sit down and just destroy everything. There's an underwater stage. There's freaking flying alien vampires. There's one of those science fiction machines that changes human beings into aliens. It's cheesy, it's fun, and in that regard, it's a lot like Area 51. And if it rhymes, it's true. If you're an Atari and you know that Activision made just a buttload of terrific games for the 2600, and everybody lauds River Raid and Pitfall and stuff like that, but Pressure Cooker was a sneaky, sneaky little game that not a lot of people talked about, but if you play it now, it holds up remarkably well. Remarkably well. It's a lot like Tapper or Root Beer Tapper, which everybody loves that game too, but in this game, you're a short order cook who's in charge of making cheeseburgers. Now, I've always thought working at fast food would be horrible, and I would hate doing it. This kind of also cements my fear. There's a crazy robot machine from the right that shoots out ingredients, and you've got to body check those <laughs> those ingredients back into the 
holes of the robot machine, which I don't know how hygienic that is, and I'm sure that that counts against their health score. But you grab uh, lettuce or tomato or onion or cheese, and you put it on a hamburger, and you assemble these things according to how they're ordered, and you shoot them down the chutes. And it's pretty much a nerve-wracking mess that can get really crazy. It feels like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. And the music can kind of drive you crazy, too, building the tension. But overall... A really fun experience. You know, it's a lot like Tapper in a way. And if you're a fan of Tapper and you've you've passed on Pressure Cooker, I would strongly suggest you check out this guy. Atari really started kicking out some really AAA titles for the Atari 7800 near the end of its life cycle. And Midnight Mutants is another one like Alien Brigade that takes a page out of what was popular with the Nintendo library. I always thought Midnight Mutants was our answer to Legend of Zelda, and let's be honest, it's nowhere close to being as awesome as Legend of Zelda, but in its own regards for the campiness, the B-movie element, using somebody like Al Lewis, who at this point was probably 91, as a mascot and and an in-game guide, I thought this game was ridiculous. It talks about evil optometrists, which I've never heard of such a thing, being trapped in a pumpkin, and Grandpa asks you every once in a while, have you been a good boy? As he's stuck in a pumpkin. I, I don't know. This game is nuts. If you're into goth, if you're into horror games, if you're into Halloween type stuff, this is the game for, from the Atari 7800 library that's for you. It's a sprawling adventure. There's a lot of mazes. There's a lot of things to find. There are some pretty elaborate boss battles with giant heads. There's a mansion to explore, and pumpkin patches, and a church, and a crypt, and a forest that's easy to get lost in. It is an RPG where you level up your weaponry, and you level up your strength, because you'll need it to fight the evil Dr. Evil, uh, which all Dr. Evils are pretty much evil, but this guy has bugs coming out of his ears. So I'll tell you, you know, the Atari 7800 was nutty with its quirky library, but when your bad guy of your most ambitious game has neon green bugs coming out of his ears. Uh, these guys are nuts. This this is a nutty, nutty little world that we are in. The game can be overwhelming, even though you have a telepathic link to Grandpa Munster. He can tell you what to do next and give you some advice as you're on your way, but eventually he stops giving you good advice. Maybe he's running out of oxygen in that plasma pumpkin there because he starts asking if you're a good boy or are you doing good in school. Little weird questions at the end of the game where you probably need the most help. I do have a guide for this game on the Atari 7800 for a website. By the way, I have one for Alien Brigade as well, since there's a little, there's a couple caveats with that game. So if you get stuck on these games, make sure you check out my website. Here's another Activision game, and I famously have said before, well, I don't know famously, infamously, let's put it that way, that I'm not a huge fan of Hero for the Atari 2600, and that gets a lot of online death stares from a lot of nerds. And nothing personal, I just thought the graphics were terrible. Here we go with Hero for the Atari 5200, which improves upon the graphics. And I think the game is served a, a lot better with improved graphics. The sound is a little bit better, but it's essentially the same gameplay. You traverse these caverns with a backpack gimmick that is equipped with a helicopter fan which I watch some of these guys on YouTube and they absolutely I swear they they freak me out I don't know what their mothers think but anyway getting back into here we're we're, instead of flying around North Carolina skies we're actually in these caves trying to rescue spelunkers and stranded adventurers we have dynamite that can blow up walls but we got to watch out for the creatures of the night and we have a small laser beam that can help us dispatch of annoying spiders and bats and we have an oxygen limit too oh my god when you get in these cave situations you run out of oxygen fast so we got to find these human beings down here uh, very fast and if you do there's champagne headlines and big boobied women for you i don't know if i robot was influenced by the alan parsons project or the book 1984 or some sort of crazy acid trip but this is a really weird arcade game i don't think it's ever been ported anywhere else just because i don't think it would work But it's a libertarian type game where a young robot wants to buck up against its master, Big Brother. And Big Brother is represented by a giant eyeball. And the big rule in this world is you don't jump when the eyeball is out. That's the big rule. I could live in that world pretty well without having to buck up against the system. But this little robot wants to frickin' jump. So 
what you do are these levels are littered with red. There's red uh, pathways and little sections and it's up to you to clear off the red parts of this game and when you clear off the red parts of the level you can uh, eventually attack the eyeball of that level and keep moving on then you go into a kind of a strange shooter portion of the game which isn't great but it's still kind of fun and then you go into the next acid trip influenced level what makes iRobot great are the different levels and just the crazy ideas behind these levels. These are truly fun to play. The problem are these graphics. These graphics may throw you off. It took me a long time before I was like, hey, I'm going to play this game because I kept, I, I just didn't know what the hell was going on. It was one of the first games to be three-dimensional. It was one of the first games to use polygon graphics, which I guess we're all familiar with, like Star Fox for the uh, Super Nintendo or Body Harvest for the Nintendo 64. But back in the early 80s, you know, people really weren't doing this. So this was groundbreaking stuff, even though it's kind of hard to see what the hell's going on. There's a doohickey which adjusts the three-dimensional camera. Those things aren't ever good. But when your brain kind of wraps around what's happening and you can kind of see what's happening, this game becomes awesome. The problem is if you're not playing on an arcade, you really have to watch out what you're playing it on. If you're emulating on like a Raspberry Pi, I find the joystick is way too wonky. If you want to play this game on the Digital Eclipse Atari 50th Anniversary Celebration, I find that those controls are much much tamer and I can dig it. Hey, if you got a libertarian heart, if you say damn the man, if you got one of those disjointed snake flags, this may be the little robotic game for you. Technically this is a hybrid shooter slash platformer, but really this is a mind funk. Hey, don't I said funk. Freaking hit me like that. I don't think. Oh, Popeye. Number 41 is a homebrew for the Atari 7800 by a guy named Daryl Gunther. I've always said that the 7800 was the perfect system for Popeye. And this guy, he, he made he made me sound like a damn sage on top of a hilltop. Because this game is perfect. It's a platformer. If you've never heard of it before, it's very similar to Donkey Kong. In fact, Donkey Kong was going to be released as a Popeye game at the last minute they decided to switch out the IPs and thankfully so or we wouldn't have had half the Nintendo roster that we have now and they came out with Popeye later which I don't think Popeye is as good as Donkey Kong it's right close it's it's real close I enjoy it a whole lot and I actually enjoy the first board of Popeye more than any board of any Donkey Kong game Popeye also is an old-timey cartoon based on a skinny jerk, a little uh, trick that uh, is, is just enchanting everybody in the seaport with her whimsical ways and her loose morals. And of course, she draws the attention of the biggest guy in the land. We want her, because she may be the only girl. I don't know. She's kind of a surfboard, if you catch my drift. I'm not sure what the, the, the dating pool looks like in this seaport town, but... We get to eat some spinach, and then we can beat the hell out of the big guy. This was just really a big propaganda to get eat, uh, to get children to eat spinach, I think. But going back to this particular port, because there was one made for the 2600, there was one made for the 5200. This version of uh, Popeye is almost arcade perfect. He did take a couple of little uh, creative caveats here and there, and he also included, if you select the novice difficulty, up will pop something called Revision F or Novice Revision F, which was something the original arcade uh, owners would do to make the game a little easier. Apparently, maybe uh, the original run of this was too difficult for the lames. There's also a code, again, on my website, Atari7800forever.com. You can go and, and eliminate that pink screen because, I don't know, a little tacky in my room. If you enjoy platformers, if you enjoy that old cartoon Popeye, uh, if you love great arcade games for your home systems, you're not going to beat Popeye for the 7800. What's crazy about this title, too, that just happened, it just happened as I made this video, is this game was no longer available. Atari purchased uh, the fan hobby site Atari Age and all of their homebrews, but this game is owned by Nintendo, and Atari and Atari Age can no longer sell Popeye. And this game was getting upwards of two, three, four, five hundred dollars on eBay. There is a new company. Actually, I'm wrong about that. It's not a new company. They normally do uh, ColecoVision games, but they have announced they're releasing three 
of these old Atari Age games that, that Atari Age can't sell anymore through their store. Popeye is one of them, Moon Cresta, and also Keystone Coppers, which is a version of Keystone Capers. Anyway, go check out this website if you're interested in purchasing the Atari 7800 version of Popeye. I would strongly suggest doing it because, to be honest, this is one of the best games for that system. And, of course, it's in the top 50 of the best Atari games of all time. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Tell us. Did we miss something? Did we get something wrong? Do you hate this list? Are you getting freaked out that your favorite game's not on the list yet? Please put in the comments what you think. And if we miss something, let us know. We want to know. Also, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notify bell so you know when the next video counting down the top 100 is. You don't want to miss one. All the cool kids are going to be talking about it for years to come. I want to thank John Stoll over at the Atari Network, and I want to put his channel in the description. And also, don't forget, check out my website, Atari7800Forever.com, and also go to BigAndFunkyProductions.com. We make movies. Right now, it's Halloween. We're making horror movies. We've made horror movies. Check those out. The Hike, WJHCAM, and Camp Smokey. Plus, we do uh, all sorts of other types of TV. we got a brand new show called Weird Roads, a new episode of Wrestling with Ghosts. Just go check it out. You'll be entertained for years to come. All right, make sure you stay tuned to this channel so you can see what we crown the top 100 Atari games of all time.